to another episode of Close to Broke. My name is Kieran, and today we're going to be at our meetup game. You may be asking, Kieran, you're back at your house. What's going on? That is the correct answer to that equation. Unfortunately, I did not make an intro, but there's a couple of really important things that I got to let you guys know about before we hop into this historical meetup game. There's a ton of content creators that came through. All their links will be in the description. And more importantly, uh, I couldn't have done this without Wolfie, so please check him out. Go over to this video and comment a bunch. Let them know that C2B sent you guys. Again, that's Wolfgang Poke. And just a massive personal thank you to everybody that came out to the Horseshoe in Baltimore. It was a wonderful time. A huge thanks to the staff. That was unbelievably remarkable. The way they treated all of the players that came through. We are forever indebted to you guys. It was a wonderful time. Anyways, that's enough talk and let's hop into today's session. Before we get into today's video, there's a couple things I want to mention, and that is that our WSOP package giveaway will be concluding tomorrow. So if you haven't had a chance to submit your video, I'd recommend you do so. You never know what can happen. And this is an opportunity of a lifetime to hang out with a bunch of your favorite vloggers. So if you happen to want to do it and haven't done it already, there's absolutely nothing to lose. Secondly, I just want to thank everyone again that was involved in making this possible. This meetup game was historical. As far as I know, no one has come close to these kind of numbers since the end. Andrew Nimi and Brad Owen meet up at the other casino in Baltimore. So and this is all thanks to you guys, as well as a big shout out to the Baltimore Horseshoe. It's so great to have like a home style casino like that. I think the dealers know your faces. The staff there really gives crap about you. And they're looking out for what I believe is the best interest of the players. Thank you guys. As always, you guys are wonderful. Again, a huge shout out to Baltimore Horseshoe. They were unbelievable hosts, and I think you guys had a great time winning those high hands. Without further ado, let's hop into today's unbelievable historic episode. So after what was an unbelievable start, and we have a pretty warm welcome to enter the room, we are now here to donate some money to the wonderful people of the East Coast vicinity. Anyways, hopping into the very first hand, we're going to have to put that whole idea on hold when early position decides to raise to $15 and we look down at pocket kings we're into the game for 500 bucks that is the max that we're currently playing our opponent has you know somewhere around 250 or 300 bucks to start off with anyways I end up three betting the $45 holds back to my opponent he ends up making the four bet jam for 250 bucks I'm never folding pocket kings obviously so I make the call and at this point and you guys will see as it ends up being kind of like what I try to do in the video this is a meetup game. My goal is not to leave here with more money than I came with. I think that defeats the purpose. I'm here to provide a bunch of fun, friendly environment. And on the fly, we go and ask the floor staff if we can run the board twice in this lower games. Again, if my opponent can win one of these, that just makes me happy. If he wins both, maybe I'll be like a little bummed out. But in reality, I just want to drive the action and I end up having a big hand. And again, that's not the goal. Anyways, George, the wonderful floor staff, the manager, he's unbelievably great. And the reason we were able to put this together, he ends up allowing us to run the board twice. So the whole meetup game, you can run the board twice if you'd like. We run it out two times. The first board comes out nine high and the second board comes out queen high. My opponent shows ace, queen of spades. We were able to scoop both pots, unfortunately, for him. Uh, big shout out to James. Uh, unfortunately, I was I was stacked you there, brother. But uh, I promise you, in another world, I'm probably, you know, the one with ace, queen, and you stack me. Anyways, that is going to conclude the first 10. And let's hop into this next handful of hands. By this point, about 45 minutes have gone by, and we find ourselves on the second table of the night. At this point, if I'm not mistaken, we have like 8, 9, or 10 tables, something like that going already. It's been a wonderful time. We're about an hour into the meetup game. And we look down at Queen 7 offsuit. Here in Baltimore, you're allowed to do a button straddle for up to 10 bucks or something like that. That's what ends up happening. Everybody folds. I'm in the cutoff. This is a pretty weak hand, but people joke around and call it the computer hand. I end up making the raise at $35. The straddler makes a call. We're going heads up to a flop out of position that comes Queen Jack 3 with two hearts and a club. I end up checking the action over to him. This is the worst, you know, queen I'll ever have in my range. And it's nice to have this as a check and evaluate when the action's on him. He ends up checking it through. We're going off to a turn card that comes at three. You know, there's some chance that my opponent can have a three here, but again, I'm just not going to be scared of that. I bet $40 for value to which my opponent ends up making the call. Going off to river, hoping for a reasonable card, nothing too crazy. The river comes up, an eight of clubs. Sure, this is a little bit of a tricky card on the river as now 10-9 gets there, but I'd almost always imagine in position with 10 high, it'd be more logical for my opponent to be betting that on the flop as a semi-bluff. So I'm just really not worried about that hand a great deal. And I actually don't mind polarizing myself with a pretty weak marginal holding like this. 
I do have top pair. I've very much shown not a ton of value or strength in the hand. I can have a ton of bluffs considering the hearts miss. I end up betting $150. My opponent goes into the tank before eventually deciding on a call. If he takes that long, obviously that's uh, not good for him. We show our hand and it is in fact good. He lets us know that he had jack nine. So happy to take that pot down. At this point in the session, chips have been flying. We're still at the same table as the previous hand. And man, do I've got to tell you, I don't know if it's just the kind of gameplay that I put out there, but uh, it seems like the lovely community that we've put together also likes to mix things up. I find myself in the straddle for five or six, I think it's six or ten dollars. I know there's a big difference, but it's just hard to remember all these things, especially in a meetup game environment. There's an early position limp and the button decides to make it 30 bucks. The button is playing about $500 somewhere in the range. We look down at ace, king of spades from the straddle. Man, that is, I mean, better than Santa Claus coming down the chimney, dropping you some presents on Christmas. I end up deciding to find an isolation three bet to $85. Holds back over to my opponent who snap jams for 450 bucks. I'm just never gonna be folding here. Even if he shows me aces, it's a meetup game. I'm okay with donating a little bit to the subs. So I end up making the call. Now let him know that we're allowed to run it twice. And he lets me know that that sounds good to him. The first board is not very good for us as it comes out nine high. I tell my opponent immediately, obviously, what my hand is. And he tells me that my hand is good. The second board comes out ace king high. So we flop top two pair on the second board. Seems like we're going to be scooping this. And our suspicions have been confirmed. Well, my opponent shows queen jack of diamonds. The old four bet jam $500 with queen jack high. I love to see it. It's something that I would definitely like to do. So props to this gentleman here uh, and lucky that you ran into me and, uh, you know, usually I could definitely be bluffing there. But unfortunately, this time around, I was telling the truth. There was no fibs being told. And just like that, we find ourselves, you know, doing fairly good in our session today. Moving along, we actually didn't play a hand in the third table, I think. Or if we did, it was just nothing of note. So I think this is the fourth table of the night. And in this spot, middle position, who is an older Indian gentleman, if I'm not mistaken, Shout out to the Indian people that watch the vlog. I'm half Indian if you didn't know already, but you know, there you go. He just has a race of $12. He's definitely been action packed, doing a lot of fun little slow rolling. So hopefully I can crack whatever it is that he has. The small blind is where I'm located. I make the call with ace 10 offsuit. The big one makes a call as well. One three ways to the flop that comes. Jack five deuce with two spades and a diamond. I do hold the ace of spades here. And when the action starts off with me, I decided to check it over to the initial razor who bets $40. Pretty big C bed here for sure, but considering we do have an over and a bunch of back doors, I end up making the call. The big blind folds, and we're going off to the turn card that comes the king of clubs. This is a pretty interesting card as it now gives a little more equity. I check it over to him once again, and yet again, right on cue, my opponent decides to bet $65. Not as big of a bet as it was on the flop, but again, still a little scary and something to be a little wary about, I should say. Man, I should be a rapper after all that rhyming, but I think that my timing might be a little off. Anyways, I make the call. We're going off to a river that comes the six. This changes nothing. The spades don't arrive. The diamonds don't arrive. The spades don't arrive. And the six of diamonds doesn't change a great deal. When I check it over to him and he bets $100, my question now becomes what hand can go for three streets of value? I guess aces for sure, but I do block that. And I guess king jack and maybe king queen if his he bets for, you know, a pot sizing on the flop with that hand. It's hard to tell, but I want to take the gamble here. So I decide to raise him to $285 thinking that maybe he just got really weird with the hand like queen jack or something. Anyways, after a bit of a tank, he ends up making the call. I announced ace high and he nit rolled me with king jack. Slam dunked it in my face. He was very happy to slow roll me. All good in the hood. I think it was definitely made out of fun. There was no malice, I think, there. So unfortunately there, that is one of the first big hands we lose in today's session. And we're just going to have to live with it, I think. This next hand is a ton of fun, and there's a little bit of a backstory at the end of it, so definitely buckle up for a really fun time. There's too many limps to count. I think there's five or something like that, and I find myself on the button with pocket sixes. Five dollars seems sufficient, so I limp it. We're going off to the flop. Five ways that comes ace, jack, four, rainbow. Pretty freaking horrible. Not a good flop for us, and it doesn't seem like it's a good flop for anyone as the action checks over to me. I decided to check it over as well. The turn card comes a six of spades. So we now make the bingo bango seto. Very interesting situation where one of the blinds decides to lead out for five bucks. Middle position calls for five bucks. And then the cutoff, who I wanted to give a genuine and a real shout out to. So wait to the end of the clip so I can let you know who he is and why he's so important, I think. Just a big shout out to River Rat Rob. He ends up raising on the turn here to 25 bucks. 
with the action on to me again sure there can be some hands that are better than mine but it's just not very likely so i've got to maximize this as that six of spades does present a backdoor flush draw as well as some other random straight draws that maybe somebody limped in with i decide to make it 85 dollars everyone folds except for river rat rob he makes a call and we're going off to river that comes the unthinkable a six and it would not be a wolfy and close to broke meetup game if i didn't give you guys a bang we make quads on the river in a massive situation and moreover if our hand holds we win the high hand for 300 bucks why that's important just wait when the action's on my opponent i tell him right away you guys can probably hear from the audio just check it over to me i'm gonna jam i have the See, best hand I just fold you. i yeah, said it was coming it um darn it i'm gonna bet and you should fold I'll, I'll just say that much. 200. I wasn't going to fold anyway. Hi, Hey! And you might be asking, why are you doing that? Like, to be totally honest, I just didn't want to win money at my meetup game. Maybe that sounds super stupid or something, but like, my goal is to just put on a really fun time for the people that are kind enough to support us. You know, Wolfie and myself are, are out here. At the end of the day, all because of you guys. And we're lucky enough to have our opportunities because of you guys. So, at the end of the day, I just want to make a fun vlog. Whether that's action-packed or not, uh, I'm going to always bring the action. So, I end up asking him to fold. He does fold pretty quickly. And I show pocket quads. I don't know if they're pocket quads. But I show quads. And the high hand does hold. And this is the action that we end up bringing over. Quick mid-session update. Letting you guys know briefly that we are currently... I don't know, maybe closer to the end of the session. We have one or two, three more tables to go. Uh, we ended up winning the high hand there with the sixes, as you guys saw, and it, it held. We won 300 bucks, but that's not what we're here for. We're here for a good time. So, as you guys see, the session's going pretty swingy. We're up, down, and upside down. So I'm gonna quickly head over to the table we won quad sixes with, and we're gonna splash the pot three times giveaway you know what i mean this is a fun thing if you guys are curious please make sure you click the link at the top of the description the telegram if you guys ever want to play in the splash squads it's a really good time it's a ton of fun but besides that i thank you guys uh you know for everything the meetup game has been unbelievable there's like 10 tables here it's been an unbelievable success the poker room is gorgeous to have is unbelievable anyways let's walk over and now do the splash pot river rat rob was kind enough to call a little bit you know on the on the weaker side on the turn and if it wasn't for him we never get that river to come out in our favor and i never get the high hand we get the 300 dollars high hand and i immediately take it over to the table and i say hey guys i'm gonna do three splash pots back to back to back for a hundred dollars each i want to you know entice you guys to put on some action i started recording it somebody that was in seat nine who was a really really wonderful vlog watcher he was super kind very genuine and had been stuck a little bit in the game i think he had like 150 bucks in his stack or something like that and he was into the game for like three or 400 bucks. That was all that he had left to play with in that specific day. And he said that, you know, no matter what happens, I want to jam and give myself a chance of spinning it up. And that's exactly what happens in this clip. He's in middle position here. There was a limp from early position. He ends up jamming. River Rat Rob, again, massive shout out to him, makes a call from the blinds. Early position calls as well, and they're going three ways off to a flop that comes jack high, if I'm not mistaken. River Rat Rob instantly jams, having his opponent covered. The early position player ends up folding, and the both players expose their hands. River Rat Rob shows ace jack for top top, and unfortunately, our friend here in seat nine shows queen jack. At this point, the entire table is sitting back watching a massive pot unfold. Seat nine is begging and asking for an, a queen on the river. Their turn card comes a three of diamonds, if I'm not mistaken, and the river comes. A queen! The crowd goes wild, and look at this. And, and, and this is something that I'm going to take away for the rest of my life, and what I like to believe, you know, there's good in the world, as cheesy as that sounds. As opposed to being upset, as opposed to being a jerk, as opposed to being appalled of a situation that sucked, this guy just got sucked out in a massive pot, River Rat Rob, the king himself, gets up with a smile on his face, and shakes the hand of his adversary, very happy for his win. Why is that important, you may ask? Because that shows the character and the culture of a person. River Rat Rob is a genuine man. He is a veteran of the United States. I salute you, sir. I thank you very much. Thank you so much for being a part of the meetup game. 
people like that is what makes this community unbeatable no matter all the rta no matter all the cheating no matter all the frog poison you can give this community people like river rat rob exist god bless you brother thank you so much for being a pleasure and a gentleman at the table shout out to seat nine you can obviously tell this mattered a lot to him he was freaking out in the clip as you guys saw all around awesome that was freaking awesome i'm happy i got to record it all and be a small part of it you guys were all wonderful huge shout out to the c2b community let's hop into the next couple hands moving right a lot from that excitement just quickly obviously at the top of the description is you know the usual links but please make sure to check out river rat rob i'll leave in the description like i said that kind of i don't know that kind of quality in a person is hard to come by and i really respect him a lot for that especially since he's a vet man just give let's show let, let's show him some c2b love drop some comments in his videos as well as you know very much importantly secondary uh my brother from another mother alexander wolfgang poker make sure to go to his most recent video his link will be in the description as well make sure to let him know c2b loves him the c2b community supports him so again guys subscribe to them if you guys haven't already let's hop into the sixth hand of the session which is an absolute banger i'm currently in the straddle it folds over to the small blind who limps the big blind who's a really fun player uh, I believe his name is Julian. Seems like a crusher. He ends up making it $15. I decide to make the call with eight four clubs here. It's loose, but against what is like a 2x, uh, seems like a no-brainer. I make the call in position against everybody that's involved in this hand. The small blind calls as well. We're going off three ways to a flop that comes 5-5-3 five, five, with two clubs. Our opponent decides to see bet here for $25. I make the call with our flush draw. Small blind folds, and we're going off to a turn card that comes a four of diamonds. We now improve to a pair. And when the opponent bets $85, it's just unlikely for me to fold here. There's a great chance that I have the best hand anyways. And moreover, we still have a ton of equity if we're drawing or need to draw out against some kind of an overpair. I end up making the call for the double barrel. We're going off to a river that comes the king of diamonds. This changes the board a little bit, and it makes it a little more likely that if you had a hand like ace king or king queen that was double barreling, he got there on the river. Luckily for me, though, my opponent decides to check it over. Never going to be betting this river as a bluff, so I end up checking it back. He shows ace-three offsuit, and we show eight-four of clubs. It is good. Our bottom pair is going to win it for us. And just like that, we're heading in the right direction after a little bit of a punt yeah, with the ace-ten. But in this next hand, we're playing a little more of serious poker. When early position decides to limp, and there is a button straddle on, we look down at king-ten offsuit. I'm going to go ahead and isolate this wonderful vlog watcher. His name is Stefan. Huge shout-out to him and all he does for his community. I make it $50 to go, only he decides to make the call, and we're going off to a flop that is absolutely, it's almost kind of fair, maybe unfair. It is my own meetup game. So when it comes king, king, 10, rainbow, we've got uh, to find a way to make some money here. Stefan checks it over to me. I decided to see bet for a puny $15, like, I don't know, 1% of the pot or something goofy. Stefan can never fold for that price, so he makes the call. And we're going off to a turn card that comes at Jack of Clubs. When he checks over to me, I think at this point it's time to ramp up the pressure. I make it $85 going somewhere into like 60 or 70% of the pot. He ends up making the call. We're going off to a river that comes another king. Bang! This is just goofy at this point. Like, I don't even know how to react. Quads. I haven't had quads in what feels like a year. And twice in the same day at my own meetup game, it just kind of feels like, uh, I don't know, maybe it's a little... Just, I don't know. It's it's awesome, though. I can not I can only say that. I tell him immediately that uh, just make sure to fold. I'm going to jam. He checks it over to me. I end up doing just that and jamming. He eventually does throw his hand away, and I show the table once again that we have quads. This is the sixth or seventh table we've hit on the night. It's been going pretty great to this point, and I just feel super lucky to have been uh, finding a way to chip up in these little spots. Coming down to the last hand of today's session, we're honestly just trying to mix it up here. This is the second to last table that we've hit. And in the last table, unfortunately, we couldn't get any hands that were worthy for the vlog. But this one is just kind of ridiculous. We look down at nine deuce of heart from late position. And uh, yeah, I'm just trying to mix it up, I suppose. I make it $25 to go as there's a $6 button straddle on, I think. The button decides to make the call. The big boy makes a call. We're going off to a flop that comes king five six with two hearts and a diamond this is a pretty good flop for us uh flopping a flush draw with this horrible hand it's not gonna stop me from betting here so i decided to bet 50 dollars going two thirds big blind makes the call he's the only caller we're going off to a turn card that comes in nine of clubs but now we improve to a pair as well as a flush draw and when the action checks over to me it's time to build the size of the pot there's a small chance that we're ahead with our pair of nines solely and there's another chance that we're still behind and if we do hit it'll leave us an opportunity to jam pretty safely on the river 
to maximize our SPR of one to one. I bet $125 and my opponent, Mr. Chop Chop, ends up making the call. We're going off to River. The villain is asking for a seven on the river and asking thou shall receive as it comes to seven of diamonds. He ends up leading all in for $300 instantly. I can't fold fast enough. It's just not a great river for me and it puts a four liner out there. He's kind enough to show that he had eight five of hearts so that would have been really interesting to see if a heart came out i would have got all the money in but as it may be as it stands we end up not making any money on that hand we end up losing a pretty chunky amount and that's going to conclude today's session it was an honor and a privilege hosting this in baltimore i don't think i could have asked for a better city in the east coast to introduce you know us our viewership and our little community this was an unbelievable time and just a huge thank you to everybody involved you guys made today one of the most special days in my poker career by far what are you thinking over there? So just before we get into the official outro, I wanted to thank you guys on a more personal level for everyone that made the time out of their busy schedules to come down on a Sunday. Man, you guys have no idea how much that meant to me, how much that meant to Wolfie. It was an unbelievable time. It was one of the more special things that I think we've ever done with our community. And to have 150 people on the list, and I don't know, like 10 or 12, I don't, I don't remember. There was a ridiculous amount of tables going. We tried our very best to meet everyone, to give our time and our attention to everyone, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, from the bottom of my heart, I love you guys. Thank you so much for making the effort to come out. A big thank you to George, Ming, Sean, all the people involved at the Baltimore that were kind enough to you know, make this whole thing possible. Big shout out to the Horseshoe Casino. Big shout out to everyone that came out, like I mentioned. And more importantly, a big shout out to Wolfie for partnering up with me and making this uh, a reality. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this little, you know, more intimate thing. And I'll let you guys uh, see the outro now. Well, 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 unfortunately, that is gonna bring it to a close to what was one of the most exciting days uh, that has come due to this whole poker vlog thing. The I don't know, the, the, the amount of people that came out today was unbelievable. Gentlemen like this coming through, causing a ruckus. Nah, these people were amazing. It was an honor to be here. I think 10 tables maybe. There was 150 people on the list at one point. It was ridiculous. The fact that me and Wolfie were able to, to do this is just a, is a testament to how unbelievably amazing our uh, communities have become. I appreciate you guys as always. Thank you so much for watching. Today, it's not about the money, but I'm sure some people are interested. We were in for... 1500 and out for 1490 if you can see so we lost ten dollars over like six seven hours of playing all good uh we won the high hand and you guys saw that i splashed the pots shout out to ming gentlemen as well i appreciate you guys as always for coming through stay happy stay healthy more importantly run good to the tables y'all deuces thank you so much for watching yeah.